Okay, so the next thing in the book we're going to have a look at is a uh, an excerpt from a story called um, To Kill a Mockingbird. Now this is a piece of American literature, and America isn't really famous for literature because it's America. Um, one of my friends is actually a, uh, an American author, um, nice guy, uh, very, very well educated, and he's from a family of, of um, authors and writers, and uh, yeah, he's very, very talented. But I think he'd be the first person to tell you that American literature is um, crap. <laughs> it's absolute garbage. Um, that's why we have American literature and not just literature, because you can always tell, you know, when, when something's not quite the same, um, it's not capable of the same thing, and we have its own version of it. Um, that's typical of anything. Um, in this case, in this case, we have American literature. It would be like um, uh, women's football. Women's football. Women aren't as big or as strong as men. They can't compete on equal footing in some sports. So we have a special women's league so they can compete. Um, similarly, American literature is for Americans who went to American schools and therefore are American. So there you go. Uh, so we're going to have a look at um, something in the book. I can't remember the page. Uh, to Kill a Mockingbird, page 84, 85. That's a very, very short excerpt of a book that I don't think I respect. Uh, I'll tell you why. Uh, it's written by Harper Lee, a woman who wrote this book in the 1930s. Uh, no, sorry, in the 1960s. It's set in the 1930s. She wrote it in 1960, and then she never wrote another book till 2015. That is never a good sign. That's a first red flag. Now, I'm the first to admit I haven't read this book. I suspect it's bad. I suspect that it's um, not only a bad book, um, I suspect it's poorly written, and it only exists for political gain. Uh, that, that's my suspicion, because that's how America works these days. If a book got written um, on these themes about uh, feminism and uh, racial tension, and that's what this is all about, um, uh, empowering women and uh, black people are good just because they're black, um, those kind of themes are now what America's all about, and this book, uh, despite being not particularly well written, is now uh, a mainstay in American schools. Um, it's very seldom analysed by professional analysts, and I think the reason for that is because, um, two reasons, number one, it can't be, because there's just nothing there, there's no meat on these bones, it's not worth analysing, and secondly, because uh, you can't, without being accused of racism or sexism. Um, <clears throat> a very brief outline of the plot, such as it is, is um, it's semi-autobiographical and uh, it's based on uh, Harper Lee's experiences as a child, which she clearly doesn't understand. Um, <clears throat> we'll see when we go through the excerpts. Well, it makes a point about the fact she doesn't really know what she's writing. Um, it's based on the idea that uh, these three children become friends, um, there's a mysterious person living next door called Boo Radley. I, 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 okay, I, I mean, she's an American. Um, her father is a lawyer, a well-respected and very prominent lawyer, and um, he's defending uh, Tom Robinson, who is a black man accused of raping a white woman. Now. On the surface, that seems like a, you know, an interesting story, <clears throat> uh, and this sort of thing does happen. There's a huge cliché of black men raping white women. This is a very common thing, and it's a cliché for a reason. It's, it's not as uncommon. Um, the other way around is, it, well, it's, it, there is no other way around. Um, if you look at the crime figures, it doesn't exist the opposite way around. That's why uh, these things are talked about. Um, and this book tries to say, don't talk about it, it never happens. Uh, and unfortunately, the crime statistics do not bear that out. Now in the book, it turns out that the, uh, the, woman, um, the woman actually uh, approached Tom and um, was never raped by him at all. Um, the father is the one who beat the, the daughter uh, because she approached um, the black man. I, I'm not really sure of the details. And it turns out that the, the family is poor white trash. They're the scumbags, they're the villains of the piece. Tom is then shot 17 times, escaping from prison, uh, as innocent men do. Um, 
So it's all a bit of a mess. Um, it's supposed to be about feminism and um, empowering women. Um, not really sure how, how the book is supposed to represent that, but you've got a woman here who lies about being raped. Um, it, that, 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 in my opinion, women who lie about being raped um, deserve to go to prison and be treated exactly the same way as a rapist because they destroy lives just the same. Um, unfortunately, I have personal experience of this. Um, I, I, I have known people who, who were sexually attacked and I can promise you it destroys lives. And I think women who claim it when it isn't true are undermining um, the very real horrors of what happens to women who do go through this. And I think those women deserve to suffer uh, the full weight of the law. Quite apart from the men whose lives are destroyed by, by this. And, and we all know, I mean you know, as well as, uh, as well as I do, that nobody believes the truth. People believe what they hear. So if, if a rumor gets out about somebody, that can destroy your reputation. So I, I think that women who fake this uh, are as much a criminal as the people that perpetrate the crime in the first place. Um, it destroys men's lives and it undermines women who have gone through something that really is quite awful, quite terrible. So I'm, I'm very much on the side of the truth here. Um, so this woman in this story doesn't deserve our sympathy if, this is, if the service narrative is to be believed. Um, so I'm not really sure how that's meant to represent women in a positive light because that seems to be quite the opposite of that. Um, Tom, I don't know how he's represented as a character. He escapes prison. I don't know how, don't know why. Um, I haven't read the book myself because we don't. In England we, we just simply don't read these books. Um, they're American and it's all about American culture. Um, we, we never had this. This whole racism thing, uh, like, it's, it's so endemic in American culture. We did never have this in England, we never did. I have um, black, white, Asian friends, no one cares. In London, we, we just don't have this. Um, America uh, broke away from England and sued for independence the very same year that England banned slavery and made it illegal to own slaves. Um, now that's very suspicious, and it makes you think maybe America doesn't represent itself quite right in the history books. It's certainly an eyebrow-raising uh, uh, possibility. Um, it doesn't quite make sense. You know, they sued for you know, taxation independence, but really it was the same year that um, England banned slavery and was sending out military ships to block the passage of slaves. So they were, they were attacking slave ships and rescuing the slaves. So we never had racism to this degree in uh, England until very recent times when it's been politicized and put all over the news. So I suspect this story is political. I suspect that it's, it's out looking for political gain. Um, I've read through these excerpts. They, they're not particularly good. Uh, they're not long enough to form an opinion, in, in my opinion. I think they are free samples from the novel um, that you can probably get anywhere and I don't think there's enough material here to, to even warrant putting them in the book. Now I wouldn't normally have bothered, I would have skipped this. There's another section after this from Lord of the Rings which again is only a tiny bit of text. We're not going to do it because it's pointless. Um, I don't think this is, uh, there's much of a point on this either, but I do believe it's worth noting that this is novel only exists for political gain and not because it's a novel that has any great value. And I want you to see um, the difference. I want you to see that uh, sometimes literature um, is very misrepresented. Uh, and talking of misrepresentation, uh, America is trying to enact a law now. America whose reputation is that they've been based on freedom of speech, they're now trying to bring in a law so that if your words cause psychological harm to somebody, you could be in prison for two years. Now, how do we even qualify um, emotional, psychological harm? Um, I can say something to you that will upset you, but it depends on you. You are your own check and measure. It's not up to me to say things that uh, don't upset you. It's up to you to deal with the world around you, and that's how it should be. Uh, this is very wrong. This is very, very wrong, and it's going, it's going to cause problems. And of course, the fact that that law is even being planned offends me and causes psychological harm to intelligent people. So the very people that are trying to enact it should be in prison. Ironic. 
so let's have a look at the excerpt and then we'll go through the uh, questions 1 through 10. To Kill a Mockingbird by Harper Lee. Mrs. DuBose lived alone except for a Negro girl in constant attendance. Two doors up the street from us in a house with the steep front steps. She was very old. She spent most of each day in bed with the rest of it in a wheelchair. It was rumored that she kept a pistol concealed among her numerous shawls and wraps. She was horrible. Her face was the color of a dirty pillowcase and the corners of her mouth glistened with wet, which inched like a glacier down the deep grooves enclosing her chin. Old age liver spots dotted her cheeks and her pale eyes had black pinpoint pupils. Her hands were knobbly and the cuticles were grown up over her fingernails. Her lower jaw was not in and her upper jaw, upper lip protruded from time to time. She would draw her nether lip up to the upper plate and carry her chin with it. This made the wet move faster. Something had happened to her. She lay on her back while the, with the quills up to her chin. Only her head and shoulders were visible. Her head moved slowly from side to side. From time to time she would open her mouth wide and I could see her tongue undulate faintly. Cords of saliva would collect on her lips. She would draw them in and then open her mouth again. Her mouth seemed to have a private existence of, her own, of its own. It worked separate and apart from the rest of her, in and out, like a clam hole at low tide. Occasionally it would say like some vicious substance coming to a boil. Maycomb. Maycomb was an old town, and it was a tired old town when I first knew it. In rainy weather, the streets turned to red slop. Grass grew on the sidewalks. The courthouse sagged in the square. Somehow, it was hotter then. A black dog suffered on a summer's day. Bony mules hitched to hoover carts flicked flies at the sweltering shade of the live oaks on the square. Men's stiff collars wilted by nine in the morning. Ladies bathed before noon after their three o'clock uh, naps. What? Ladies bathed before noon after their three o'clock naps. And by the nightfall were like soft tea cakes with frostings of sweat and, s and sweet talcum. So not, not terribly well written, not terribly bad. I've seen worse. Uh, I think it goes around in circles way too much. Um, I think it's a bit vague as, a, as to who and what. Miss DuBose, for instance, she's horrible, why? I mean, we don't know. Is she horrible because of the way she looks and this is just the perspective of a child? I think, it's, I think it is. She's um, rumored to have a gun, uh, but why does she have a gun? Has she been attacked? is the fact that she owns a gun a sign that she's been a victim and that she doesn't plan to ever be a victim again. Uh, it's, it's very vague um, and I, I admit it's far too little a piece of text for us to base any opinion on. Um, I don't like the writing, I think it goes over itself too much. I think she's trying to use um, forms of expression to write a vivid picture and I think she's doing it um, amateurishly my opinion. Um, the Maycomb section, um, just, I just don't like it. It's, it's just not enough. There's not enough material there to, to, to base an opinion on. Uh, I don't think it belongs in this book. So let's have a look at the, the um, uh, answers to the questions. So number one, um, what is the colour of Miss DuBose, DuBose's face like into? Well, um, it's meant to be a dirty pillowcase. Um, a dirty pillowcase, but my, my pillowcase at home is kind of cream coloured, like off-white with flowers. Don't judge me, my wife chose it. Um, and of course it's a little bit dirty, because uh, I'm a man. That's how it is. It's, it's interesting actually, our pillowcases, all of our stuff is washed at the same time. But mine's dirty and hers isn't. I don't know why. Because we shower before we go to bed and everything, so I don't really know what the, what the problem is. Um, just a man. But James's pillowcase, my son, uh, his pillowcase is grey with Spider-Man on it. 
So what colour is her face? I'm going to assume that her face is um, grey with Spider-Man printed on the side. Uh, what image does the verb glistened um, bring to your mind? Uh, well, not, not the image of an old woman, uh, but instead the image of um, a diamond ring or something, something shining in the, in the light. I, I don't know what impression we're supposed to get from that, or even if we're supposed to get an impression from that, uh, and I'm not sure that I care at this point. Um, glacier, what image in my head? Uh, a glacier is a big block of ice, so something cold, big, powerful and slow moving. So in other words, um, not this. Um, what things in the passage give the impression of old age in the character? Well, the entire passage is all about the woman's age. So any answer you've got from the word Mrs. DuBose to coming to a boil is the right answer. So these questions, like many of the questions in the book, are stupid. Uh, let's have a look at the make em section and see if we can uh, mock that equally relentlessly. Um, number five, what image can you see in this description? What images can you see? Oh, God. Um, I can see a dog. I can see uh, a mule. I can see men's stiff collars wilting. And I can see ladies, for some reason, turning into soft tea cakes. Which I presume is literal. I presume that the women in this town literally turn into cakes and the black dogs run around eating them. At least that's how I, I assume that this is happening and uh, that's what I want to be happening. So the women, um, they bath before noon and then after three o'clock and then they turn into tea cakes and are eaten by the dogs. Um, how does this description make you feel? Um, bored. Um, what smells can you imagine from this description? I think this book stinks in, in a literal way. I, I think this book is garbage. Um, I'm not, I don't want to read it. I don't want to watch the movie. I don't care about this book. Um, I, I don't care. Um, number eight. What simile is used to give uh, an image of the ladies after suffering through the hot day? Well, they're sweaty and they turn into cakes. I didn't know cakes were made like that. Now I do admit I've never worked in a baker's shop, but I just presume that you mix flour and water and eggs and sugar together to make cakes. I didn't realize you take um, sweaty women into the back and turn them into cakes. I, I'm, we're learning something. Um, what is the purpose of describing people and animals in the paragraph? I just want to take the person that wrote these questions and Use my special education stick um, on them. Um, you're a person, okay? You, you are a human being, which means you experience the world around you as a human being. So if I want to describe something to you, I have to do it to a human being. So describing human beings makes you feel what they feel. So the, the reason we do that is so that you can feel what the human beings in the story feel, and I can give you this vivid impression person to person. Smack this guy. Um, identify three phrases that show how hot it was. Uh, it was hot. Uh, I just, just write that three times because this is stupid. So, stupid section of a stupid book. Um, I don't think the story is worth um, putting in the book. I, th I think I feel a little bit cheated by the fact that it's there. Um, I wouldn't have done this, and we're not going to do The Lord of the Rings. Now, The Lord of the Rings is a very different piece of literature. It, it's not American literature or English literature. It's literature. It's a very well-written fantasy book that all fantasy books are, in some degree, inspired by. Now, I don't like fantasy, and I'm not skipping it because um, I don't like fantasy. Not at all. Uh, I'm skipping it because it's only that much, and there's just not enough to, to be interesting. There's just not enough there for us to, to really dig into and to find any value in. Um, a piece of writing needs to be at least long enough to make a point, and, and they haven't given us enough to work on. Now, I, I think that in this book they've done the same. They've not given us enough to, uh, to work on. Those excerpts are way too small. Um, but I, I tend to think from looking at the Wikipedia entry, looking at the history of uh, Harper Lee, I, I, don't, I don't really think... I, I think a real author would have gone on and written other stuff. Uh, I think it's extremely suspicious 
that an author uh, writes one book and it gets published and it becomes a huge cultural phenomenon in America and she never writes anything else. That is extremely suspicious because I know how hard it is to be, uh, to be an author. It's, it's unheard of and it wasn't heard of then either. In the 60s it was extremely rare. So I think um, her publisher was looking for something that made political points found this, maybe she was encouraged to write it, She's pro if we look into her history, and I'm not going to, you'll probably find that she's married to somebody in the publishing industry, um, and I think this is exactly the wrong thing. So I don't like the book, I don't like um, the way it was written, I don't like the excerpts, I don't agree with it being here, but I did want to show you um, the negative side of all this kind of stuff, how, how things are represented in the media that aren't necessarily true, and how the media tries to use education to exploit your naivety so that you believe that certain things are the way they are when they're absolutely not. So I hope I've managed to show you that uh, to some degree and uh, hopefully you can make your own mind up because that's what you should be doing. You should be making your own mind up. It worries me that these books are in American libraries um, but the opposite of that book isn't. You know, if you're gonna make an informed decision, you should be reading Harper Lee's book um, and something that says the exact opposite and you should be trusted to make your own mind up. You're not trusted to make your own mind up. That's a serious problem. And I hope you see that. Okay, thanks very much.